Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm late. I get it. I get it. Uh, from Domain to Profit is where you are right now. I am Drew Wash, and we are here to talk about domain names, specifically today, how we can use domain names to experiment with whatever crazy business ideas you have going on in your brain. And uh, there's a lot of good, crazy stuff happening in my brain all the time, so domains just line up perfectly. So what kind of crazy ideas do you have from day to day? You know, you wake up in the middle of the night, maybe you pull out a journal and you're like, you know, we need pencils that write in multiple colors. I just found recently my wife actually bought a pencil. When I was a kid, we used to have these pins that you'd push a bunch of different things and different colors of ink would come out. They have those for pencils now. Not 100% sure how they have that. But somebody woke up and they're like, let's come up with a pencil that works like those crazy pens we used to have as kids. And, well, now we have those crazy pencils. So whatever the crazy idea that you have, domain names are a great way for you to just try it out, see how it works, and see what happens. So uh, let me see. I'm going to try to mute this. Uh, hopefully it keeps working. Okay. Audio is still working. That's good. So uh, today we're going to be talking about experimenting with whatever crazy business ideas you have using domain names, which is just part of what I do. I'm an experimenter. So how about you? You know, what uh, What do you enjoy about domain names? Maybe you don't even know what a domain name is. You know, the dot-com real estate of the internet. It's 10 bucks a year if you just go register one. There's no code options that allow you to just put some crap up there and try it out. So be thinking about the ideas. Pull out that uh, idea journal. We're going to get started here on Domain to Profit. Say hi in the chat. Let me know who all is here. See you on the other side. From a dot com to a business idea. Take a domain name, develop an income from domain to profit. We'll show you how. Domain to profit from domain to profit. Join through Wash and get started right now. Okay. Well, I it's such good stuff. I experimenting is one of my favorite values. I think I just tweeted about this just recently. Uh, you know, we it, just this idea of trying new things, testing things out. The blast. What are you testing? So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look today. We're going to be going through some domain expi expirations that have happened or will happen this week. So what does that look like? Basically, people register domain names. Those domain names, if they decide not to keep them or for whatever reason, they let those domain names expire. They then go potentially up to auction. When they go up to auction, it basically it, those domain names will uh, show up on an auction site like GoDaddy or Snap Names or Namejet. Uh, today we'll be looking at GoDaddy primarily. And those domains show up, and then a bunch of people get to bid on them because you know a lot of people love some of the domain names we're going to be talking about today. Uh, that we're going to be finding the list. A lot of people want them, and they're willing to pay quite a bit of money for them. Uh, so, But there's always great deals for a couple hundred bucks. So if you are going to, if you're going to try something new, you have some crazy brain, uh, cr you know, crazy idea, what are the paths that you have for trying it? What are your options? You know, it used to be that, Back in the day, if you wanted to try some business out, you'd probably need, a, at minimum, to run expensive ads in newspapers or magazines. You'd probably even need a retail storefront for people to walk by. There's, there's all kinds of things that you would have needed back in the day that nowadays you just need a website or an app, and then you need people to find that app. And it really isn't that expensive to... Go find the precise people you're looking for to try it out. I was just talking to my meeting, uh, my marketing people, just before this show. And basically what I was telling them is, you know, we need to, you know, continue to experiment with our different ads. And you can learn a lot with $20 is exactly what I said. Our company, we can learn a lot with $20. What headlines work, 
what copy works, what images work, what video, what is connecting with our audience to bring them into our website or into our app. So your crazy business ideas, and hopefully they're really crazy because this is the beauty of it. Like this is where you get to go mad. So I need to spike my hair today. You can go mad scientist and try whatever you want and solve some crazy problem like a pencil that has lots of different colored ink. And then you could uh, get crazy ink colored pencil.com, run some ads, send it to it, and boom, you have a business. Goal is not to be rich. The, well, I mean, that may be your goal. Realistically, for me, my goal is to have freedom and flexibility, which making money helps with that, right? But to be able to experiment and try something, that's a blast. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up our expired auctions. We're going to be looking through those, and I'm going to go over to share screens. If I could find the button, share screens. Here we go. Boom. So we are over on our favorite little site here, expireddomains.net, expireddomains.net. And uh, we are going to be looking at, uh, and this is a free tool that we use pretty much every week. Uh, not because of any reason other than, well, it's free and it's the best one I found. If you have a better tool out there, just always let me know. Uh, but this one's pretty good. They make their money by when you click on the link in the uh, their list, they get a commission off of it. It costs you no more. So it's a free tool for you. So certainly use this till we find something better. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm clicking on marketplace domains. And then I'm going to GD expired. That's GoDaddy expired. You can see it in the little alt text that shows up there. I believe that shows up. And here you're going to see over 462,000 domain names that are currently in this list of GoDaddy expired. Uh, on this list, GoDaddy expired. There's snap name uh, pre-release domains. There are also... Uh, let me see another good one. Drop catch will a lot of times have a few. A lot of all of these different marketplace domains will have options, uh, some of which are for expired. So you can search through all of them, uh, or you can just like leave it open to all marketplace domains. Just for the sake of saving you time, you're going to find most of the good domains here over on GoDaddy expired domains. But most isn't good enough. If you have your crazy idea, feel free to go looking all over the place. In fact, you can just go right up here to the far upper corner and search for whatever you want to search for there as well. For the purpose of this show, I like to keep it simple. So we're going to go in. We're going to set up some filters because we don't want to look through 400,000 domain names today. At least I don't want to look through 400,000 domains today. So we're going to get rid of any of them with numbers. Numbers typically aren't very good in a domain name, at least not the domain names that we prefer to build businesses on. Uh, we get rid of hyphens because nobody wants to explain a hyphen over the phone or anything like that. Then we're going to restrict this to within the next eight days, pretty much within the next week. I'm going to say, hey, we want English words. I don't want some made up fictional um, Dr. Seuss made up word. And then over here under the additional tab, I am setting up .com. And that is because .com is what we want to use. Like you, for the most part, .com is the main thing. Can you do anything on any different domain name? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you don't have to use .com. However, what we talk about here on Domain to Profit, we love domains that have authority, validate your business and idea, uh, as well as something that has some scarcity behind it to where others likely want that domain name. Those three characteristics and more are why we like .com over other domain extensions. You can use other domains, but you're always going to wish you had the .com. Kind of a general rule of thumb. So uh, what we're going to do is for about 10 minutes here, uh, we're going to be looking through some domain names, and then I'm going to go check out uh, some GoDaddy auctions, which actually let me pull that up. Uh, I have an auction that I want to work that I'm going to bid on today. And I just wanted to kind of walk you through a little bit of how I do that uh, when we're bidding on a domain auction. So I want to make sure that I'm ready for that as well. So I'm just setting that up because their website takes me 
a long time to log into and things like that. Okay, going back to our screen. So pretty much what we're going to do is exactly you follow along. If you go to expireddomains.net, uh, that GoDaddy expired, and then uh, you set up the same filters, you'll see the same list that we see. Uh, feel free to shout out in chat or in the comments if you're watching this on a restream. Any domains that you see that you're like, ah, that's a great domain. So let me see. Social, like the, you'll see a lot of these domains just look great. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Michael says you, you can't use uh, Dr. Seuss anymore. I, 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 I thought it. I thought that as I, uh, as I said that, I'm like, you know, that, that's kind of a hot topic right now. And, social media, which speaking of social media, socialshare.com is one of the brandable domains that we have uh, kind of mentioned here. I avoid brandable. What do I mean by brandable? No, don't get me wrong. I love brandable domains, uh, but for the purpose of starting a business, you typically want your domain to describe what you're going to do. Social share, if you're creating an app or a website that uh, specifically does social sharing of some sort, it is a great domain for something like that. The only thing is, is ultimately social share. It's, it's a little, it's a little brandable, brandable, brandish. Uh, it doesn't sound like it really describes something as much as I guess. Oh, well, okay. Anyhow, not going to make the list, not going to create a business for that. But what we're going to do is pick out a couple of these. We're going to talk about some ways uh, that we can develop a business on it. Carfly.com. Why don't we have flying cars yet? I want a flying car. Gardenrooms.com. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? I have to think that's a thing. Yeah, Gardenrooms.com. My wife yells in. We have a garden room. Like we have a we have a three season room. We live in Cincinnati, Ohio, so we have a like it's called a three, but it's a, basically a room that you avoid during the summer and the winter because it's too hot or too cold. There's no heating or anything, but it's great for kind of starting your garden in the spring and uh, kind of extending your season in the fall. So gardenrooms.com, I'm sure there's something to it, like inside greenhouse or something. Is that what they're referring to? Uh, certainly an interesting domain name, currently going for $205 over on GoDaddy. That one's going to end in three days, and uh, so you're looking 200 bucks is what they're uh, kind of what it is currently. And let me see, over 5,000 is what the estimate is. Uh, it may be worth that. Now, here's the thing about an estimate: estimates are just kind of like a ballpark of what it could sell for if you found the perfect person out in some distant future. In reality, in this case. I'm guessing garden rooms will probably end up going for, I could see it going for like low, like 12 to $1,400. Uh, partly we talked about this a little bit last week, anything landscaping garden related tends to go for a lot of money. There's just, well, one, it's always a local business. So there's always a lot of companies that do that. Everywhere has landscaping. Everywhere needs flowers and grasses and trees. So when you get to these landscape type domains, you have a lot of people. Remember, we talked about a domain name, authority, validation, and scarcity. There's scarcity. A lot of people want landscape and garden type domains. So that way, that's why I'm guessing this one's going to go into the four figures. Uh, that one's going to end in three days. Certainly something interesting. You pro I'm guessing product or show people how they can DIY uh, turn a room into their house into a garden room. I, I'm not sure. Not loving it, but it's an option. Okay, running down through here. We have, sorry, I just realized I need to use the page down button, not scroll. Yeah, here's landscapepro.com. I don't think we saw that. It's a little bit of on the brandable side because it uses the word pro at the end. Uh, that one's going to end in seven days. So we'll be talking that one will end basically next Monday, I believe is what that is. $67. Again, you can see that high estimate because it has landscape garden in the name. Uh, so landscape pros, an okay one. Uh, probably going to go for pretty good money as well. 
organic lawn care. It must be somebody losing their portfolio of landscaping type domains. Goodbear.com. Uh, car bumpers. I don't really know what you would do with that. Master development. Ooh, master developer would be good, but it's not what that is. Let's find something that we can plan a business on. So the nice thing about crazy ideas is you could probably, it, it's actually a good exercise. If you take any of these domain names, you can come up with a business idea for them. In fact, the crazier the domain name, the cheaper it's going to be and the more likely it is that you can try some crazy business idea. Uh, so for example, I mean, good sneakers, Anybody call them sneakers anymore? Are they called sneakers? I guess obviously they are because we have, you know, 286 people visiting this domain, seven bidders, 34 bids, 234 at $5. Uh, but for example, goodsneakers.com sounds like it's going to be selling shoes, specifically sneakers or kicks or whatever cool people call their shoes nowadays. Uh uh, you know, this is a good opportunity for Shopify. Shopify is one of the is a service that helps people sell products. They handle the logistics and the shipping costs and taxes, and uh, they can, I believe, even help you find inventory if you don't have a physical product. So you can buy this and sell other people's sneakers or resell for other people. Not a fun business, in my opinion. If you love shoes, then go to it. How about, uh, let's see, Eco Logos, in, imagine you, Dream Driver. Dream Driver goes with that carfly.com. Fair Trade Center. We need, it, it, how funny would it be if we had uh, multicoloredpencil.com <laughs> since that randomly came up earlier? Okay. Well, let me go uh, down to this first page, and then I'm going to pop over and just show you a little bit of how I bid on domain names uh, that are going to go for a little bit of money. And this is the monotonous, exciting work that we get to do as domain developers. Of course, if you already have an idea, if you know that you want to make a multicolored pencil or something like that, you can just type in different words into the search box at the top, and then that way you could find a domain name that's in a marketplace or expiring soon uh, that contains the words that you know you want, like pencil, for example. In our case, we're making this up as we go along. Uh, Matt saying, why did they capitalize it? Yeah. So uh, there was a domain somewhere in here, uh, Vegas Sun Demand. Uh, and that's uh, the expireddomains.net. Uh, they capitalize based on the words. So they're just missed out on that idea of uh, it being Vegas. So Vegas on Demand yeah, I like it as Vegas on demand. It's kind of nice when they uh, make that mistake. And I think we just saw one last week or two weeks ago that uh, they cased something wrong and kind of hid how good the domain name was. So you do have to you know, pay attention to that a little bit, as well as avoid the middle S. You talk about that all the time. Uh, usually as we get into some of the lower price domain names, they they love to sneak in an S into the middle of a word. For example, naturals watch instead of natural watch. Like they, they sneak an S. It still looks good, except for it's all it's a trap because you typically don't want an S in the middle of your domain name. Very seldom. Performance house, container trans, dedicated lawyers. Advanced tools. Advanced tools. 
I think advanced tools would be what you would actually look for. Flow Spaces, what a great brand if you do interior design, interior decorating, anything like that. Flow Spaces, like, sounds cool. Or if you do custom furniture. But again, brandable rather than actually something you would put. I mean, if you're into brandable, then go for it. So, I mean, you get it for cheap enough. Moon Wars, that sounds like a great video game name. Moonwars.com. have to be coming up yep on the first page okay so that's our first page we're not seeing a ton today so we've went through our first 200 domain names i'm going to pull up the second ones but i'm going to go out here to godaddy auctions uh one of the things that we are going to uh hopefully it's not too close in fact let me uh take my screen off for a second okay uh so I just want to show, uh, we're going to be bidding on bestedibles.com. Uh, that's going to be one of the domains that I'm, that we mentioned that last week on the show. We're going to bid on that a little bit today. Uh, you can always tweet at me if you're, if you're going to be in it as well. Uh, but basically, bestedibles.com, I love it. It's something I'm interested, on, interested in. Uh, and when you talk about a domain name, that's probably going to go for uh, a little bit of money. There is uh, a process that I like to follow. Process, not so much. There's a little bit of a strategy that goes into it. If you go in here and say, say you type in $688 and you agree to their terms and you submit that bid, it is going to, behind the scenes, it place that bid. I'm the highest bidder now. And you'll see here that the current price is $400. Well, I put in $688. How am I paying? For? Okay. Well, here's what happened behind the scenes. Basically, all these different bidders, specifically the one that was winning prior to me, bidder five, they had a max bid of $395. That was their proxy bid. And then when we bid in a higher amount, it took that bid up to uh, $400, which was is what it is currently. That means that we took over the lead, but then your proxy bid sits there and others will bid against your proxy bid. Now, what I wanted to kind of just mention was the thing about a proxy bid is uh, it gives other people information about your bids and your bidding strategy. If you know that you're participating in a domain that you really want, that's going to go for high three figures into the four figures, uh, you typically don't want to use proxy bids at first. If you if you're like, I'll pay you know a thousand dollars for this, and you enter a thousand dollars, what will happen is you'll find that people will start to kind of peck at your proxy just to find out where your limit is, or they might assume it's at a thousand, so they'll kind of bid you up to like, you know, 990 or whatever else. Uh, so there's all kinds of things like you don't want to give that information. And let's say, assume this, let's say that they bid 1100. They enter a high proxy. They will then see what your maximum proxy bid was. So now they're kind of starting to see, okay, we're starting to bump up against what they were willing to bid. So, that's when you get into these bidding wars of, uh, you know, $5 more, $5 more, $10 more, $10 more until next thing, you know, the domain names, thousands of dollars. You prefer, I prefer, most auction people prefer to start that small incremental battle as soon as possible. The sooner you start that, the faster the domain hopefully will uh, reach the boredom phase for somebody and they just give up on it or in a high proxy and walk away. So what happens each time that somebody does a proxy bid is if the domain name is within five minutes, it moves the time left to five minutes. So back in the old days when we would use eBay or whatnot, you would go into eBay and I'm pretty sure that right, like eBay used to allow, to allow you to bid right up to the last second and the highest price won. And so you'd have everybody waiting to the last few seconds to bid. And next thing you know, 
like you don't know who won until all the time's up and then you find out who bid the most and it was super annoying. They figured out pretty quickly that they needed to add time to auctions. So you'll find that GoDaddy and many other auction houses, houses, auction houses, auction services, they now uh, will extend a few minutes. There's some cases, like I think if you're up against a proxy bid, I think, anyhow, I got my my opinions, but eh, nobody cares about them. Uh, ultimately, though, it no matter what, if you try to even wait to the last minute, you add money to your bid, it will take it to five minutes. So here's what, for better or worse, there are programs out there uh, available to the big guys that – uh, will allow people to bid at the last minute. They increment it by the minimum bid, and that adds five minutes to the auction, uh, forcing even if somebody else has a proxy bid, now that person's proxy bid goes up, but there's five minutes left on the auction. It counts down to one minute again. They bid again. It goes up, extends it by five minutes. So when you run into a bot or somebody who has way too much time on their hands, you very well could be in an auction that runs for, gosh, I've given up on auctions uh, way early because I just get so distracted or tired of them, which is the goal. Their goal is to drain you of your energy to where they can get the domain name cheaper than what they, you know, if you value it at a few thousand dollars, and you get it for a thousand because you made the auction go for you know an hour and a half. Uh, well, you know that's a pretty good deal, especially if they do it automatically. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll just tell you this one little thing, which is uh, when I uh, one time I was bidding on uh, Sharonville.com. Actually, I, I remember the domain name because I now own it. Uh, but I was bidding on Sharonville.com on an old Namejet uh, auction. And uh, it was I was up against one of these bots or one of these people that would do that, this, this whole waiting to the last minute. They bid. I had a proxy bid of like 1200 bucks, and they ended up getting it for like 1288 The reason being they extended the auction. It went like over an hour past the end because they were just going against my proxy bid because I had entered in too high of one. And then they ended up getting it just above my proxy bid uh, because I was distracted by my son who I had put into the corner for a timeout. And I was talking to him and I kept checking on it or whatever. And then eventually whatever happened, dad drama, I uh, came back and time had run out and I had lost on that auction all because of that whole five minute game. And I ended up reaching out to the person uh, and buying Sharonville.com for, I think, like $3,200, uh, which was well over a $1,000 premium for, uh, over what they had paid for it. I think it's probably twice as much as what they paid for it. Like, they, they got it in like two days. It's a pretty good profit. So hopefully that's helpful in the strategy. I don't know what strategy you use, uh, but if you use – uh, you know, kind of some interesting strategies with your bidding. Taking up time definitely adds to it. So, for example, uh, when uh, here, here's one way to look at it. I value my time heavily. I think my time's worth a lot. I don't like to waste time. Uh, so when I, you know, am part of an auction, if an auction's taken an hour, I have to consider my time in that auction. And because I value my time worth hundreds of dollars, it takes up hundreds of, it like adds to the cost of that domain name. So if I'm participating in an auction where somebody's nickel and diming me, uh, realistically, it's not the $5 they're bidding me up. It's the $5 plus another five minutes of my life spent refreshing that freaking page. So anyhow, I, I can't tell you to not be that person, but it's definitely a kind of an annoying strategy. So uh, hopefully that explanation is good. And I'm just going to yell out to my wife, Chris. Chris, does that make sense? What? <laughs> she said, what? Uh, are you good to take over on the bids? Yes. Okay. 
So yeah. Anyhow, uh, have her mess with uh, the bids. So the downside about a the idea was we'll do this three o'clock show, and it'll be why all these auctions are expiring. Uh, and I thought, oh, we could do like live streaming of uh, of the auctions as they close and stuff. Yeah, right. That's too complicated. Ain't nobody. Okay, let's go on back to the screens. We'll head back to the domains that are going to be expiring. And let's see here. Hottestslots.com. Good domain name for uh, we were, last week. We were in Vegas. Uh, did a hotel room edition of From Domain to Profit. Hottestslots.com. Sure, there's a marketing play there. Marketing play, what I mean by that is uh, it's one of the things that kills me about domains, actually. I think a lot of domain investors are driven nuts by this as well. Marketing companies and big companies will spend fortunes on, you know, branding their casino as the casino at the hottest slots or whatever else. They spend fortunes on these advertising campaigns, but then domains like hottestslots.com will go for a couple hundred bucks or never sell. And it's kind of like, if you're going to brand yourself as the place with the hottest slots, doesn't it make sense to own the freaking .com and use that in your campaign? Like that authority that gets applied, you know, we're not just, we're not just MGM grand. We don't just have the hottest slots. We're hottest slots.com where you can see a map of our casino floor and see where the, how about this MGM grand or whatever casino freaking hottest slots.com which ends in 22 hours. So it ends tomorrow, currently only a $12 bid. Buy this freaking domain, put up a picture of your casino floor and show which slots or which areas have paid out the most in jackpots. The hottest slots on your casino floor. You better darn well believe your local community or other people are going to be looking up at what casino, what slots are paying out, and they're either going to have their strategy of going to the red area of the floor that are hot or the cold area thinking that's going to get hot. I mean, hotteslots.com, freaking, there you go. But only a big casino could do that, right? You can't do it, most likely. We can't do it because we don't have access to that data. But if one of the casinos were to do it or some kind of data aggregator that deals with a bunch of casinos, what a freaking great product you can put up that would just draw lots of slot players, which is the kind of players. In fact, here we go. I'll be the first bid on that. I don't know what I, I don't know how I could ever do that, but hey, we're talking about experimenting today. We're using domain names for experimental businesses. Maybe you can sell the idea more than actual product. So it makes sense to me. At least crazy experimental Drew. So let me see here. Uh, we have a tip that uh, Michael shared about dealing with those GoDaddy pages. He uses the easy auto refresh. It refreshes the page for him. And I'm assuming that's when you're viewing a specific domain name that I think there is a refresh option. When you're viewing the, uh, the list, don't believe it gives you that option. Maybe you have some special account, Michael. I don't. I don't have that. Uh, somebody took that out. Uh, anyhow, I, yeah, I don't see a refresh option. Maybe you're on the app or something. So, uh, I just click the button. I don't. I don't know. I, there's there's better ways to do it. I'm sure. Uh, know the whole page. Auto refresh. Is that an app? Michael is mentioning uh, Easy Auto. Okay, he it is. He is. Uh, there we go. There's the mystery. Uh, mystery solved. It's a easy. It's a Chrome app that you could use to refresh the page, which makes sense. It would be nice if GoDaddy, GoDaddy. I'm sure you're watching. Add an option to auto refresh the freaking data. We don't need the whole page to reload. It's asynchronous, people. It's freaking 2021. You don't need to refresh the whole page. I don't know how much money you'll save by not having us all refresh the page and just refresh the data. Anyhow, 
Do you not like money? Okay. Okay. Back to the domain list here. Uh, I get a little fired up on this stuff. Uh, like it, you, there's there's such easy ways to refresh specific data nowadays. There's no reason to, uh, to refresh the whole page, but innovation is delayed by the size of the company. No hate speech. Systems key. Systems key. It's a middle S. Systems key. It kind of sounds pretty interesting. I, I like. What would a systems key be? Systems key. Sounds like a pretty good way to uh, to organize. I don't know. Okay. Rat watch. For anybody out there watching political people. Uh, headset reviews. I own some review domain names. Uh, review websites are difficult to to operate, legally expensive at times, uh, but reviews are gr – what a great keyword. People are searching for headset reviews. In fact, let's head out to our friends over at SEM Rush. Let's see how many people are doing it. Doing a search for headsetreviews.com. Anybody out there, do you have a uh, headset review or uh, specifically reviews? Anybody have review-related websites, rating websites? I see they rank really well in the search engines a lot of times. So here we go. Uh, 480 exact match searches. So that's kind of low. Uh, gaming headset reviews is only 8080. So there's not a whole lot of volume on it. 32 cents, not much money. So realistically um, – Quick roll formula, it's only going to be worth like 180 bucks. So likely not going to be something interested. Not worth uh, diving into the review realm. But who knows? Maybe you want to experiment with a review site. Maybe heads that reviews is it. Robotic accounting. Stuff that goes through my head. Uh, Hulu Pro, avoid that. You're going to be getting the trademark issues with that. Uh, I would at least recommend that. Some people are into that whole battle with giant corporations. I prefer not to. And I can't help but put this up here. I, I wish I could feature that on the uh, the whole screen. Just, yes, I'm right. Network Solutions, worst company ever. Like it's, the anyhow. In my opinion, in my opinion, the worst, like I, I, I've actually, I've, <laughs> there's very few companies I've ever done this for, possibly only network solutions, but I actually wrote them a complaint letter, a physical letter complaining, and I wrote it and mailed it to them and of course never heard from them at all, but it is what it is. Funny how that works. So uh, but yeah, network solutions. It, you only do that if you truly believe that uh, company is not doing a good job. It's like some companies just they live in the past where you know, they don't think they actually have to serve their customer. Like I know that even in our company, we do stuff that uh, we do stuff that I want to do better, and we're always working to do better. And when companies seem to do stuff that is not in the interest of the customer, but in the interest of themselves, like freaking, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. We, we live in a world where like you, you go searching for what people think about network solutions. You'll pretty quickly find that you shouldn't do business with them yet. Here it is. Lots of people do business with them mostly because they used to be the main registrar in town registrar being a place that you can register domain names. So like GoDaddy network solutions. Uh, I use Epic, uh, Epic with a K. Okay. What's K? I think it's K. Uh, Epic with a K.com for my domain stuff. Uh, they have a lot of good tools that I enjoy. Bobbing.com. Bobbingo. 
I'm cracking myself up today. Okay, so <laughs> I've gotten so distracted looking through domains. Um, I just recently read, um, sorry, get over here. Uh, I recently, I, I'm in the process, I should say, of reading a book by a guy named Scott Adams. He's the guy that did uh, Cartoon Dilbert, and uh, it's called How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. And uh, in it, he talks about talks about this here. He, he, he had this formula where he's like a, a good skill plus a good skill is more important or greater than an excellent skill. And he mentioned this and I'm like, what? Like that's like most like nonsense Ever Like, what the heck does that even mean? Uh, so the reason why I wanted to mention this idea, uh, that when I read this in his book, I uh, did not agree with that at all. This idea that you're better off to learn multiple skills at a good level, at just kind of like average, above average. You're better off stringing together, you know, like in skills at a good level then you are one excellent skill. And uh, that goes against everything I've ever kind of thought or everything I've even, I, I've even said, you're better off to be ex, you know, excellent at one skill. Uh, so when I read it, I, let me get back to the right camera. Okay. So when I read that, I was kind of like, that doesn't make sense. And, uh, and he went on to explain his perspective on that, but, it, I honestly, I still wasn't buying it. It didn't even, I didn't even make a note in my journal about this because I kind of, I just disagreed with what he was saying. Well, uh, then it occurred to me that the reason why it does make sense, like why his static, why his idea makes sense. And here's, here's, let me explain this to you just a little bit. Try to get this crazy thought out of my brain because it very much goes with this idea of experimenting based on domain names. I, I am, uh, yes, I know domain names, but even before that, before I, back when I was buying crappy domain names, I learned how to do uh, some basic web design. And I was, you know, average at web design. And those websites needed graphics. Uh, so I got okay at doing graphics. And nowadays, uh, I, uh, you know, we do stuff like this, video. Well, I need to learn a new skill. So now I'm average at video. And I always kind of disliked the fact that I am a jack of all trades, that I know a lot about, or I know a little about a lot of things that I'm okay at a lot of things. But then I realized that the reason why that is, is because my role is to be an experimenter. My role is to experiment and try new things. And this idea of an, being excellent at one skill, the reason why that a lot of times is what we tell others is because being excellent at one skill is the best way for you to make the most money for your time. If you want to sell your time, you can make the most money by being the best in the world at your skill, which I don't know what it is, just the old mentality. That's what I always thought we wanted to do, right? We wanted to uh, I wanted to be the best video editor because then I could do it faster and I could do more projects and I can make more money given a 24-hour day than other people. And it's kind of like in this idea of developing out domain names, building websites in this 24-7, seven-day-a-week world that we live in where web is everything, it's more important that you be able to do things quickly, to try things out, to experiment, and to do that, you can't always be waiting on 
you know, uh, a Fiverr person or a guru person or some consultant to give you the graphics. And this person is like, you can ultimately though, you want to be able to get it part of the way there. You want to be able to kind of experiment it yourself. So as I started to think about it, this idea of one excellent skill that you, that's an old mentality. If you want to sell your time, you'd be awesome at one great skill. But if you want to experiment and you want to start businesses or try new things, you know, choose a skill and experiment, get okay at it, get pretty good. And then when you bump up against the next problem that you need to solve, possibly take on that skill. Get pretty good at that as well. So, I mean, that's very much why I do this show was I was like, you know, video is important to my business. And, uh, you know, so I need to do more video. I need to play with this stuff and get better at it. How can I do that? Well, what if I did a live show? Well, I could do a live show, but what am I going to do a live show on? Realistically, I'm just some nerdy domain developer guy. And I was like, nobody wants to watch domain developer, development, it, you know, unless they're out there doing develop, domain development stuff as well. Anyhow, long story short, I'm like, actually, they, you exist. We exist. And it may not be a show that goes out to millions, but – you know what? I'd much rather hang out with a, a few dozen people that love the same things and that we can learn from each other. And uh, it, it just makes more sense. Anyhow, so here we are, me experimenting, learning about video, getting and gaining a additional good skill. I'm getting good at something. Uh, I'm not going to be excellent at it, but, you know, getting better than maybe average. And it's just one more skill that is going to ultimately lead to a little bit of uh, success. So there we go. Scott Adams, you may be onto something. You didn't, you didn't read my thoughts. Uh, you didn't read my thoughts when I thought you were insane when I was reading that in your book, but there you go. Now, you know, so there's a reason to uh, try new skills and stuff. And I know that our parents and everybody always tell us to get excellent at one skill that's an old mentality. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to uh, just try cool stuff and to try to change the world and have an impact, then learn those skills. And if you don't like learning, you you have a handicap. You're going to have to you have to get over that. Just learn the learn the fun stuff. Learn it to solve a problem. It's so much better. I love I freaking devour stuff anymore, uh, just because I'm learning to do cool stuff. I'm doing this. I'm doing things I enjoy. You don't want to learn about why concrete is hard. I don't care about anyhow. <laughs> okay, bad example. Go back to this. Heading back over to the screens. Actually, let me just go off and check on this real quick. Sorry, looking at something. Okay, we're going back to the screens now. A lot of stuff happening all at once. I just wanted to kind of see how... Uh, Auctions and things are going. Uh, visit shop. I didn't see that one when we first looked at the screen. That one's kind of interesting. Visit shop. Um, like you could be the guy that you can go in and uh, take a 3D camera or one of those ones that do a 360 view. You could visit those local shops maybe and do a, like a, a small tour, submit those videos to Google. You, you ever see that Google Maps? They have the little guy that you can drop in and, like explore, but you visit shop can be a service that creates 360 views of your shop. You charge some simple fee. It takes no time to do that. Uh, it makes maybe an hour and you charge, you know, a couple hundred bucks. You go visit their shop, do a 360 video. They upload it to, to Google. They get that little guy that they can drop onto a map to see 360 in their score store. There you go. Visit shop.com. Uh, that, that'd be a fun experiment, probably a service, uh, or if there's other services that uh, do that kind of thing. I, I've never heard of it, so. Okay, keeping, keeping on moving down here. Financescams.com. GeoJourney. Here we go. Here's a product option. Scrumcards.com. 
twelve dollars ends in five days. Uh, I ha I'm adding that to my watch list. Uh, here's why. Here's what I love about Scrum cards. Um, I'll keep that up while I do this. So Scrum is a a development method methodology, I believe, is what they would call it. And I once read this um, book, Scrum: How to Get Things Done Faster. I would attempt to say Sutherland, maybe is his name. Uh, it's it basically introduced me to this idea of Scrum, which is you. Uh, and I'm not going to explain Scrum. Okay, basically you come up with all the things, all the customer stories that you want on your project, and then Scrum is the way to quickly get them developed. Part of Scrum is to add a value or a score to an item. So I need our website to have a customer login. That is really important, and we're going to assign that a score of 10 out of 10 or something like that. Well, Scrum cards, cards are a way to assign point values uh, amongst a development card. So basically, there's an opportunity for a product where Scrum cards uh, can be just cards that you write down numbers or assign values to, and people can assign a, it's It's just part of Scrum methodology. It doesn't make sense. I wasted way too much time on it. Basically, there's a need for this. There's a need for this product. If you know Scrum, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. And for 12 bucks, you can experiment. Uh, even it goes for, that's one of the things I want to mention. Even if this domain name goes for $300, what can you do that costs $300 and allows you to potentially make a bunch of money, learn a bunch of skills? Like what? I, I'm, I'm talking to you, uh, I, I'm using a camera right now that uh, I believe my video guy paid like $1,700 for. And that was just like, he needed it for video stuff. So voila, we, we bought it. it. I mean, how many, how many, how many of you have cameras that you let sit in some package somewhere that cost you many hundreds of dollars, if not more? or different toys or mics or, you know, stream decks or all these different toys we buy because we want a hobby, yet we're not willing to pay a couple hundred dollars for a domain name that we can play around with, learn skills, and potentially make money on? Come on, people. Anyhow, but if you get it for less than 100 bucks, and that's great too, but uh, it's it, it comes down to if you can experiment on it, then go for it. Go for it. I encourage you, like, there's nothing wrong with with paying a little money. People get caught up in the fact that you can register a domain name for $10. Uh, if you're registering a good domain name that applies to something you want to play with, then do it. A couple hundred bucks is nothing. When you frame it against that idea that you're going to pay a bunch of money for a camera or a bunch of money for other stuff, I get whiteboards and stuff that cost more than a stinking few hundred dollars for domain and yeah, a whiteboard's helpful. It's a tool, but it's not a business. Okay, design my trip. That's fun. I, that sounds complicated. My brain goes to the idea of, you know, locations, all the things you would need for that trip. Maybe, uh, you know, your of course accommodations, how you're getting there, uh, the excursions of it. You could design a specific trip that you're wanting to take. I tend to be a last minute traveler, so I don't do much designing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time designing their trips. They will, you know, plan it out. I know people that know what they want to do in 16 months from now and are already planning excursions and sites and buying books. They're designing a trip. So uh, a website or a tool that allows them to uh, potentially, uh, assist in that process. I guarantee people either pay for it or uh, support the sponsors of it. And that's going for $12. Uh, I got to get my name in on that just because that's just too cheap people. Okay. Uh, so ends in three days, designmytrip.com. It's a domain name that authoritatively says what it does. Uh, it's going to validate it. So if you talk to a travel company, you're like, hey, we run designmytrip.com. It's a tool that helps people figure out their trips and all the details. We'd love to list you on it. Would you be interested in doing something? It makes sense to them. It's going to make sense to that business. And hopefully it makes sense to you as I describe it. So designmytrip.com. That's over on GoDaddy ending in a few days here. 
And let's see if we can come up with any more in these last couple minutes. Cast movement, paint. I'm guessing that's supposed to be paint stripper. Pain stripper. It's, it's pretty helpful. Here we go. Let me go back up here. Campaign apps. Campaign apps. Something there. Not uh, a little too broad to, to dive into, I think, but. Fragrance candle. And in some of these domains that I'm mentioning might not be available. They do appear on this list and sometimes disappear if the person that was that it was expiring for, if they renew it, it, it does disappear. So it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it happens more often than not. Okay, here, here's one, AIgarage.com. Uh, let me see if that's available. Uh, I just recently downloaded a journal app from Microsoft, and it comes from uh, a section of Microsoft called the Garage, Microsoft Garage. And basically, developers will work on their pet projects in the garage. So if you put in that idea, like a lot of small businesses or businesses start off in the garage, uh, AI is huge, and garages are where people experiment. So if you're wanting to... Uh, gather against a bunch of tools that people are playing around with artificial intelligence and machine learning and things, we're better to put that than the AI garage. Sounds like a great place. Goes, oh. <laughs> Somebody bid right at that site. You guys are funny. Okay, anyhow. Uh, so that ends in two days over on GoDaddy Auctions. Uh, AIgarage.com. And uh, the beauty of that is it goes right along with today's theme, which was this idea of let's use domains, experiment. Uh, what better than this idea of like AI garage? You know, get a domain name and or grab one out of your portfolio and play around. There's lots of different options. Uh, just to give out a Google or just do a search on Twitter for no code, no code, no hyphen code, because you don't want to mess with code, right? Unless you want to learn coding, but you start with no code. You can go from a domain name to a business or just some fun experiment so quickly. It doesn't even have to be about money. It could be about learning skills. It could be about just bettering and contributing to the world, all from domain names and your curiosity and your desire to do something, learn something. So I hope that you do it. I hope we brought something that brings that to you uh, to where today you are more likely to go out there, experiment, possibly on a domain name, and hopefully make your dreams come true, bring something great to the world. So I'm Drew Walsh. This is from Domain to Profit. I'll be back next Monday at 3 p.m. doing the same thing, looking through domains, trying to find some great deals, and talking about turning those domain names into business. See you at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right back here. And if you haven't subscribed to the U channel, hit the subscribe button and uh, you'll be notified when we're going live as well as you can follow me over on Twitter, but mainly subscribe on YouTube. Video stuff's fun. Got to use this $1,700 camera. So take care.